now i put to youtube live Then is that camera just now? Ah. Fine, sir. Good evening to everyone. On the behalf of Universal Intellectual Trust, I am glad to welcome you all. to the 14 to eit webinar series on smart contact lenses for ocular theranostics going uh, resource persons dr teninson savariraj post doctoral research fellow electro materials laboratory department of advanced components and material engineering sunsan national university south korea i like to introduce our uh, eit uh, team and the eit scientific activities our eit takes essential steps for creating the intellectual for people using various advanced tools of modern our eit <coughs> education with the research related science and technology thereby creating social awareness necessary for establishing a healthy society in this great manner vit initiates some scientific activities for our society with service minded persons here i like to mention some of our uh, scientific activities uh, this is our uh, vit uh, website forum uh, you can visit our website and then get more information Uh, we are uh, three uh, trust members are there this is myself this is dr k rajkumar secretary dr s chandra sagar treasurer uh, we have three coordinators dr y sasi kumar dr s uh, tirumurugan dr k vaitenadan so we are the six uh, here we also have some volunteers from various colleges and the university Uh, we have doing some scientific uh, activities uh, particularly i mentioned some activities here uh, we uh, we already uh, finished eit webinar series 13 numbers uh, with uh, uh, with a good expert in various scientific fields we already completed three uh, six e quizzes with uh, we all we we provided prizes also in various field like uh, chemistry physics mathematics uh, uh, biology and so on we also willing to do some other uh, quiz programs with uh, various uh, uh, topics in various fields uh, we have to um, create a scientific news blog we already published more than uh, 100 e contents in this uh, forum we have to publish some uh, recent science uh, papers uh, with highlighted points uh, and then we have to uh, organize uh, some conferences uh, webinars uh, we also willing uh, we also planning to uh, conduct a workshop on uh, spectroscopy Uh, we have uh, eit publishers uh, we are going to publish, publish a uh, book chapter in nanomaterials photocatalysis uh, we have a youtube channel in this channel we published our uh, uh, all eit activities uh, including webinars uh, webinar series e quizzes uh, question and answer and so on uh, uh, this is our scientific news blog forum Uh, you you can visit this forum and then get uh, uh, e contents in various fields uh, this is our youtube channel uh, channel you can uh, uh, visit our our uh, 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 past events in this uh, youtube channel um, uh, we all i already mentioned that we are going to publish a uh, uh, book Uh, in the untitled nano materials such as photocatalysis energy and environmental applications uh, so in this book uh, we have to publish within uh, uh, 20 days 
um this is the topics of interest in this book so uh, we already uh, conducted a uh, uh, virtual conference national virtual conference on sustainable chemistry and renewable energy uh, with uh, uh, good expert from the areas uh, uh, very uh, popular institutions and universities uh, these are our uh, this was our um, uh, Uh, our experts and the topics uh, in this uh, uh, conferences <clears throat> we already associated with some universities and institutions to uh, make awareness in csr and gate examinations we also willing to conduct a orientation program in jams uh, csr and gate examination related uh, topics um we are calling scientific exper experts from various fields uh, if you have to interest please contact us we also uh, like to discuss some uh, recent scientific papers uh, uh, if you have uh, good papers you can discuss with us <clears throat> we also calling some review and what uh, journal works uh, we are willing to uh create, we we are we willing to publish your papers and we we try to help you to publish your review and journal box um uh, we also call for e content uh, published in scientific new news blog uh, these are our uh, eit volunteers from malagappa university and uh, national college uh, chitrapalli uh today's uh, webinar on uh, smart contact lenses for ocular uh, diagnostic uh, our resource persons dr teninson uh, savariraj um post doctoral research fellow electro materials laboratory department of advanced components and materials engineering sunsun national university south korea i welcome you sir uh, we are willing to uh, hear your talk now i request uh, dr rajkumar secretary eat uh, to deliver uh, uh, in uh, introductions of uh, our today's uh, chief guest please that's kumar you are you are you, please please unmute unmute your yes. yeah so i welcome to one and all for the 14th webinar series so here we are having a invited guest who is a speaker dr denilson saviraj who is a post doctoral research scientist in the in the electrochemical lab sunsun uh, national labs from south korea and he also a uh, adjunct faculty in the psg kr college of uh, college from the coimbatore so is about his educational details so he is come up, he come across the bsc and the msc and under the physics and the material science so he completed after is bsc in lila college and msc in bardas university he got a phd in pusan national national lab in south korea okay. so in his overall educational career he got a so many gold medalist uh, under the various field so uh, it is interestingly in the msc nanomaterial nano materials he got a um, highlighted one it is a gold medal from the uh, gold medal from the bardas and in so after this educational career he went to uh, post doctoral research in the iac bangalore so it is a, a reputed institution and after that he went to chile and uh, as a post doctoral researcher in the university of Con conception chile okay. and now he is a post doctoral research scientist in the kalifa university uae so in his overall educational research field so he is a 
having a um, 27 publications, more than 27 publications, and book chapter is uh, number six, number of book chapters, and invited talks more than the 20. And presently, he is he, he presentation is nearby 25. In his whole, uh, in his area, he attained a H index for his research papers. H index is 13 and I10, which is 14. And in his recent publications, around 2022, he got a number three number of publications, and 2021, he's got a 10 number of publications. So, overall, within three years, he got more than 18 publications he published. So with this introduction, I would like to welcome the uh, Dr. Danielson Saurira for his uh, today's speech. I welcome you, sir. Sir. What do you yeah. Wait, please. Yeah, okay, sir. Please share your screen. Take your own time for starting. Yes, Is my screen completely visible? Uh, not at sir. Uh, yes, it's starting. Yes, it's useful. So, good evening, one and all. And I, at the outset, I thank uh, Dr. Kath. <coughs> The organizing committee for uh, giving me this opportunity and uh, i thank <coughs> dr uh, ganesh raja for arranging this uh, webinar series and i take this opportunity to thank dr rajkumar the secretary for uh, uh, giving me a good introduction and uh, handing over the session to me so good evening one and all and today i would like to make a presentation on smart contact lenses for ocular theranostics. So I work as a postdoctoral researcher at uh, Sincha National University, and I'm also doing a collaboration work at uh, Khalifa University, Abu Dhabi, United Emirates, Arab Emirates. So the outline of my presentation will be a general introduction and a short uh, introduction on human eye, the anatomy, different types of vision defects and disorders and uh, the history of contact lenses, how they can be classified and the characteristics of them. Then I will stress on the significance of contact lenses in ocular theranostics, particularly for uh, diagnostics of uh, glucose and intraocular pressure and for giving a uh, drug delivery. And I will conclude uh, my presentation by uh, summarizing the things and uh, presenting the future prospects. So we are familiar with this particular saying, you are the apple of my eye. So which means eye is an important uh, part of our human body. When we consider someone close to us very important, then we refer you are the apple of my eye. So for the human body, eye is a very important organ which visualizes things and conveys the message to our brain and our brain orders for the quick reaction. And we all pers <coughs> persevere and we all wish to have a healthy life. So a quality life demands healthy living and therefore we should be free of uh, <coughs> diseases and ailments. In which case, we have to continuously monitor <coughs> the diseases that take place in our body and provide rapid treatment in time. So there are certain uh, uh, physical parameters which can be measured and which should be measured continuously. For example, uh, blood glucose is one particular thing. About uh, 30 years back, we would have heard someone, very rarely heard somebody uh, being diabetic. But in today's scenario, 
every other person we meet is a diabetic it's because of heredity it's because of our physical activity it's because of our uh, food be- food habits and it is because of our behavior pattern so some of these parameters or uh, disorders should be continuously monitored so why because the blood glucose is not the same throughout the day it keeps changing based on your food uh, based on the time you had your food based on the physical activity so therefore for these prototype devices were uh, uh, employed but however <laughs> they were lacking rapid diagnostics and real time monitoring real time monitoring is it should monitor all the time 24 hours and as and when you need and in this case contact lenses they become a sophisticated platform because they meet the stringent uh, clinical requirements so contact lenses can, can lenses can be worn on eye and uh, the sensor fit on uh, in the contact lens can continuously monitor intraocular pressure and glaucoma so the deadly disorders i we won't we shouldn't call them as uh, diseases diabetics and intraocular pressure are disorders so this is the anatomy of a human eye and uh, you have the cornea at front where the light is incident you have the anterior chamber behind which aqueous humor is there and you have the posterior chamber then you have the lens the lens is held by ciliary body and the any vision or any light that is incident on our eye that is on the cornea is by being conducted through the optical nerve and it is taken to the uh, optical disc then it, it is conveyed to our brain so this is the anatomy of human eye <laughs> and in human eye we usually have certain defects like uh, myopia or short sightedness so in this case we can see the things that are close and unable to see things that are far so contact lenses are used and in the other one is uh, hypermetropia or far sightedness where you can see things that are at far and you are not able to see things that are near so in this case people use convex lenses so another one is uh, persopia it is because of the weak ciliary body so you have the ciliary body here when it gets weak it gets loosened and uh, there is some uh, vision defect this usually occurs uh, for people at a old age so until recently or a few decades ago people were using uh, spectacles uh, to get rid of uh, visions defects and later people started using <coughs> contact lenses in the place of them so what are contact lenses it's an artificial visual device used to correct the refractive index by substitute anterior surface of the cornea it can be used in the place of spectacles so the vision defect is usually corrected with the spectacles and now instead of spectacles people use a uh, contact lenses so contact lenses apart from being used for vision correction they can also be used for aesthetic beauty some people they use them as uh, uh, to add i mean to have a different eye color there are different uh, decorative type uh, contact lenses which can be used uh, to have aesthetic beauty and they can also be used for clinical uh, uh, purpose so a clinical purpose means that uh, measuring your blood glucose level or the glucose level in the tear fluid measuring the intraocular pressure so the origin of or the the very discovery of uh, uh, contact lenses goes back to 1558 when leonardo da vinci wrote codex of the eye so he proposed a concept that uh, by immersing the head in a bowl which is half filled with water uh, he can make 
vision corrections because it will function as a lens. So uh, this was the idea of Leonardo da Vinci and he proposed a model of this nature. But this is in, in practical. Then later, uh, a French scientist René in 1637 used a tube filled with water to function as a night uh, contact lens. But it was, it cannot be used in practical purpose because it is too long and cannot be worn. Then English scientist Thomas uh, Young created a prototype uh, <coughs> contact lens. And uh, later Sir Henry Herschel, he ground a lens from a glass and he used. And further development of uh, contact lenses were carried out by different people. Then uh, hydrogel based contact lenses were uh, introduced. So, most uh, hydrogel contact lenses are you, uh, uh, I mean, fabricated using a, a poly 2 hydro uh, oxyethylene methacolate and other uh, polymers. So, these are disposable contact lenses. This can be worn for a few days, some of them can be worn for only a day. So the characteristics of an ideal material to make a contact lens, it should be biocompatible and it should have good optical properties and the gas permeability should be there. There should be sufficient amount of gas to pass through and uh, tolerance to, uh, while designing or while uh, uh, the gas being uh, permeable through that. It should have the tolerance and it should be able to be molded and it should have good sterility. So free from harboring uh, pathogens and germs and it should must have stability in every dimension. Whether it is being bent or twisted or pulled, it should be uh, stable and surface chemistry should have the excellent wettability and there should be porosity. Only if there is porosity, then there will be yes permeability and should be able to have high water content and must have high uh, specific gravity and uh, resistant to scratches. And uh, oxygen permeability is one of the most important factors. This can be denoted by dK by T, where D is diffusion coefficient and K is solubility of a gas in a material. And uh, <coughs> T is the thickness of the material. So this will depend upon the permeability of the contact lens, how thick the contact lens is, the temperature at which it is performed. So there are two types of contact lenses. First is hydrogel lenses. So hydrogel lenses will have very high water content and low oxygen permeability. And silicon hydrogel lenses will have high oxygen permeability and lower content. So based on the purpose, the lenses can be fabricated and chosen. So the contact lenses will have different parameters, basic base curve, diameter, and power. And base curve, <coughs> the curvature is the central part of the posterior surface. So this is the curvature. And this is usually expressed in a millimeter of radius of the curvature or in diopters. One diopter will be one meter power one. And this can be calculated using the captometer. This Keratometer is used in all the optical uh, stores or with any uh, ophthalmologist who, text, uh, who test your eye power. So diameter, the maximum edge to edge width of a lens. This is usually measured in uh, uh, millimeter. <coughs> so <coughs> the next one will be power. Power will be having like uh, front vertex power and back vertex power. So if you consider this is the lens, the focal point from the front of the lens uh, to the focal point is called front vertex power. And the distance between the back of the lens to the second focal point, it is back vertex power and wettability. So if the angle is less, which means it is more wettable. If the angle is <coughs> high, higher than 90, then it is less wettable. So material with less wettability is not preferred for fabricating a lens. For the fabrication of lens, the 
angle should be less than 90. Less than 90. Anything more than 90 is uh, not suitable to make lens. So there are different types, low water content and high water content. Each of them, they have their advantages and disadvantages. <coughs> so as I mentioned, based on the purpose, we have to choose the lenses. <coughs> and based on the type, it can be classified like purpose of the lens, optical lens, vision correction, cosmetic and theranotic, therapeutic lenses. They are used, uh, cosmetic lenses are used for adding aesthetic beauty and therapeutic lenses are used for diagnosis and drug delivery. We are going to see the diagnostic lenses for drug delivery and diagnostics and based on the anatomical location where it is being worn, scleral, contact lenses, semi-scleral and the corneal. And uh, based on the nature, it can be soft and uh, uh, hard contact lenses and it can be gas permeable which is kind of soft lens and non-gas permeable which is kind of rigid and soft contact lenses and depending upon the wearing schedule uh, daily wearing schedule some lenses can be worn daily for example vision correction lenses and some can be used for extended wear for example the therapeutic lens and disposable lens uh, they can be worn only for a day or two depending upon their capability so the different materials that are used to, to fabricate lenses are uh, hydroxyethyl methacrylate polymethyl methacrylate cellulose acetate butyrate these are some of the materials used to fabricate the contact lenses so this is one of another, another classification hard contact lenses and soft contact lenses and each of them they have their own uh, advantages and disadvantages the main advantage of hard contact lenses are they have very good um, vision quality and uh, durability uh, they have the correction for astigmatism that is you can uh, optimize the conditions and they have deposit resistance that is when you wear there will be a lot of uh, foreign bodies as well as some secretion from your uh, tear fluid uh, that will deposit. So this is resistant to that. On the other hand, soft contact lenses are prone to that. And inexpensive, the chances of getting infection is less. The main disadvantages are stability is less, very less comfortable for wearing because it is rigid and low wettability. On the other hand, soft contact lenses are very comfortable, easy to adapt they larger and adhere more tightly to the cornea because they are soft and bendable it is easy for them to get attached to the surface of the eye that is the cornea and blur free vision because they are thin they can have very uh, good transparency uh, this advantage doesn't correct asigmatic error the asigmatic error cannot be corrected but in most therapeutic lenses people go for soft contact lenses. So now, why? Now, why we need why do we take contact lenses to diagnose several uh, uh, disorders? So we have the tear fluid that can be exerted from the eye and tear fluid has a lot of biomarkers in them. So <coughs> there are different types of uh, tear fluids, basal tears. Uh, they are used to maintain the corneal surface hydration. Reflex tears, they are secreted through transient receptor channels. It's a defensive mechanism. For example, a foreign particle falls into your eye. So immediately your eye secretes a tears. That is called reflex tears to wash away the foreign bodies. And psychic tears. Psychic tears they occur when someone is happy or when someone is happy, uh, someone is too sad. 
it is based on the emotions psychological occurrences so the concentration of the hormones in psychic tier is higher compared to the basal or reflex tiers and tiers usually have the antibodies and the antibodies found in tiers are uh, good biomarkers and each biomarker when when your antibody is formed in your body when uh, bacteria or virus when uh, something enters your body your body has a key and lock mechanism so it stops them by forming uh, antibody this antibody antigen uh, that interaction makes antibodies available in the uh, human body which is available in some fluids or the other for example sweat saliva and uh, tear fluid so since tear fluid has a lot of antibodies it can function as an uh, biomarker to indicate the presence of a disease and in the case of uh, if it is absent which means the disease is not there so they are directly secreted into tears from blood vessels along blood tear barrier there is something called blood tear barrier and blood and tear are separated because of their concentration difference uh, between them so the protein composition in human tear fluid will have a uh, it can act as a fingerprint so in diagnosing different diseases so and what is the significance of contact lenses in ocular theranotics so when tear fluid is available in your eye and you wear the contact lenses the contact lens is in touch with the tear fluid so if you can embed or incorporate a sensing unit into the tear uh, into the contact lenses the contact lens can be a platform to carry the sensor and since uh, the blood glucose or intraocular pressure and similarly it can also be used to supply a drug any i uh, any drug administered to your eye it should be it is usually given in the form of an eye drops so when you leave an eye drop in your eye you should be motionless or your eye should not have any disturbance for some time so the maximum time it can reside in your eye will be like 2 to 3 minutes and it will be washed away but in the case of a contact lens functioning as a drug carrier the drug can be supplied to <coughs> the eye continuously for a long time and it can be provided in an economic way so the drug resident time in the i will be for a long time so the role of tear fluid in the diagnostics uh, the tear film is an outer layer oily layer inner mucous layer and watery layer in between the two so this is usually responsible of lubricating the uh, eyelids conjunctiva and cornea and to provide the required nutrients to the uh, cornea this also protects the eye from the infections and it will also stop uh the uh, stop the foreign bodies uh, getting into the eye so because it's a mixture of uh, nuclear peptides enzymes proteins and protective proteins uh, uh, in addition to carbohydrates and lipids so this will have if this can have a valuable information uh, of human diseases and disorders so now we look at how contact lenses can be used to measure two types of uh, disorders one is glucose and intraocular pressure or otherwise called glaucoma so glucose is a carbohydrate it is obtained when you have food the food the carbohydrate in the food gets into your body particularly when it is digested it goes into your blood and when you have excess amount of a glucose it is called uh, blood glucose level when the excess glucose level is there you are called diabetic so blood glucose concentration should be 70 to 140 mg per uh, deciliter or in other words 3.9 to 7.8 mmol per liter in fasting and under postprandial plasma condition uh, glucose 
that is after food it should be 200 milligram per deciliter or 11.1 millimole per liter but in india usually fasting is between it should be below 90 and uh, after food it should be 120 that is a criteria they have fixed but in the international criteria is different so that is brought out to bring i mean to uh, make sale of lot of uh, tablets in india so only if someone has a glucose level beyond 200 milligram then one can be called as a diabetic so why do when one becomes a diabetic that is there are two reasons one is either you have insufficient insulin uh, secretion or your body becomes resistant to any insulin uh, insulin so in both cases one becomes diabetic and today many have uh, become diabetic because of uh, heredity the kind of food we eat and because we lack a physical activity so most of us we do white collar job either we study or work in office so the physical activity is less therefore the uh, food we take is much more than our requirement so in the case of tear fluid, the glucose concentration for a healthy individual should be 6 milligram per 100 milliliter. And diabetic 16.6 milligram per 100 uh, milliliter. So this is the concentration of uh, uh, glucose in tear. So we use this particular information to diagnose uh, glucose in the tear. So, usually the blood sugar is measured using either people visit the clinic or at home setting we use the portable glucometer. So, portable glucometer has uh, uh, some disadvantages. That is, they lack accuracy. They lack and the error will be like plus or minus 15 points and secondly they are painful because every time you have to prick your uh, finger and uh, take the blood and while using such needles they can uh, also get contaminated and uh, cause infection and enzymatic assays are reliable but uh, they have some toxic byproducts like hydrogen peroxide which is <coughs> which is to be avoided so apart from this, these methods, they lack continuous monitoring. So blood glucose level, as I mentioned, it keeps changing from time to time. And depending upon your physical activity and your uh, food, the type of food you take. So if you take uh, food that is rich in carbohydrate, the glucose level will go high. And if you do not have any physical activity and take your regular food also your sugar level will be high so sugar as the blood sugar has to be monitored continuously from time to time why because if uh, if it is uncontrolled and if it is not uh, treated properly on the long run uh, sugar blood sugar can cause a kidney failure different other type of organs can be uh, damaged and uh, it can also cause irreversible uh, vision loss. That is, you, people can turn blind, which can never be recovered. So here we propose a mechanism to use contact lenses as a sensing platform because of the advantages, like it is reliable, non-invasive, painless, and continuously monitoring. And contact lens-based sensors are mostly portable, compact, discrete, they have high water content and oxygen permeability. So there are different types of glucose sensors proposed in the past. Electrochemistry based, fluorescent probe based, photonic crystal based, graphene based, and multi-targeted multi-fluid microfluidic sensors. So the electrochemical sensors, uh, they use, they are non-enzymatic. So they have advantages over the enzymatic sensors. Mostly they are amphorometric uh, technique is used. So they measure current as a result of an 
electro active uh, material and here we use uh, three types of electrodes <coughs> working electrode counter electrode and the reference electrode so here they made a flexible type they took a polymer film and uh, uh, designed them using uv radiation and they incorporated the electrodes so they saw to that the working electrode is uh, sorry the counter electrode is a concentric circle to avoid impedance and this was attached to the contact lens and connected to the device i mean to the directing device and the glucose the solution with a different concentration of glucose were introduced and tested so they found this is very reliable giving very accurate results but however because it is connected with the wire it, it cannot be fixed on the eye it is not in a uh, portable form so it requires a wire readout it cannot be function cannot function as wireless <coughs> next type of sensor also electrochemical based they used a similar pattern and they used a silver silver chloride counter electrode so reference electrode and platinum as a working electrode and they immobilized uh, glucose oxidase and uh, they used in 0.1 mole uh, kcl and uh, they found this is flexible and it can be fixed on the eye and this is giving accurate results but the problem is again it's a wired device and they also tested this on a rabbit and they injected the rabbit with a glucose solution and they measured the glucose level in the tear and compared it with the blood glucose and they found they had a good uh, agreement between the two measurements the only disadvantage is that again this is a wired readout and it cannot function uh, wireless uh, this so it can not be taken for continuous monitoring so the second type of lenses are photonic crystal based lenses photonic crystals are uh, periodic optical structures with a band gap so this can control the flow of light of certain frequency so it will allow light of certain frequency and uh, certain frequency light will be transmitted and certain frequency light will be reflected so this can be used using light as an external stimuli similarly uh, we can use glucose as a stimuli to uh, measure i mean uh, to measure the glucose level so some of the naturally found uh, examples of uh, photonic crystals are butterfly the uh, beetle and the peacock feathers so since they are stimulus responsive they can be incorporated into hydrogels when they are incorporated into three dimensional hydrogels if an analyte like glucose is present it will expand if it is absent then it will shrink so they have a reversible mechanism they can swell and shrink so when it swells the periodic <coughs> structure of the photonic crystals will be disturbed that is they will expand and the gap between each crystal will be large so the diffraction pattern will be different so when in the absence of the analyte the hydrogen will shrink and the photonic crystals will come closer to each other so the diffraction will change accordingly so there are some reports the first one is here you have the photonic structure stamp upon which a polymer drug testing is done and after uv curing and uh, uh, printing of photonic structure uh, it is uh, the glucose deoxidase is uh, localized and when it is incorporated in the hydrogen uh, if the if glucose is present the hydrogen will swell as here when the hydrogen swells the photonic crystals in them will distance themselves from each other that is the distance between each 
crystal will be <coughs> will grow large so the diffraction pattern will be different so based on that and by establishing a correlation between the diffraction and the glucose concentration the sensor can be optimized and the other sensors are color change uh, so this is the kind of work i am doing that is in the hydrogel you insert other photonic crystals or you put some uh, you uh, initiate some antibody antigen interaction so if we have a pathogen similar uh, occurrence will come so pathogens can be detected it can be used for detecting some viruses or other biological uh, molecules and this can also be used for uh, uh, sensing glucose and here this report is about uh, graphene is used as a glucose sensor so they have used uh, graphene as a field of extensor so they have made uh, graphene channels with uh, silver nanowires and this will function as a field effect sensor and <laughs> they have used this they have fixed this on a contact lens and used it on a rabbit eye and uh, this is capable of continuously monitoring <coughs> glucose concentration same thing is used for uh, monitoring intracranial pressure so this is the latest one microfluidic lensers what are microfluidics so they are uh, channels and uh, reservoirs created with the help of laser or 3d printing in a very uh, small scale which can hold few picoliters of uh, liquid so this is one unit this is another unit this is yet another unit so in each unit you can have the sensing unit this is colorimetric sensor that is when an analyte is incident it will have different colors color change will occur so for example here you have the colorimetric sensor for urea and here you have for glucose here you have for chloride so when you are when you are uh, ice Uh, when your tear fluid gets into this if it has got urea it will have yellow color if it is uh, if you have glucose <coughs> it is for an example it will have red in color if it has a chloride concentration the color of the color uh, sensing unit will turn blue and if the co analyte concentration is more the intensity of the color will be high so this can be photographed using a smartphone and compared with a, a reference this is the latest one in this you can customize based on your requirement if someone wants to me measure a nitrate ion concentration or a, a temperature then you can add another sensing unit this is microfluidic uh, sensor with a multi target so the unit can be used to capture the picture and the rgp values can be compared the next one is intraocular pressure so normal pressure should be between 12 to 22 mm of mercury and hypertension ocular hypertension is anything above 22 so intraocular pressure will be uh, mostly be measured intraocular pressure during the day but the uh, irony is that it uh, shoots up only at night when you are sleeping so it is important to measure the uh, intraocular pressure throughout the day i mean around the clock so these are some of the earlier uh, reports of uh, uh, intraocular pressure sensors they used uh, uh, strain gas based uh, sensors but all of them if you notice they need a wireless sorry they need a wired readout but in the case of uh, um continuous monitoring this is this cannot be uh, applicable therefore <coughs> people devised uh, other methods which can have wireless way of monitoring uh, the intraocular pressure sensor this is the second generation one this is also wired 
So in this, if we notice, they have a copper mesh upon which a graphene is deposited by CVD, then copper is being etched and you have the graphene uh, mesh. So this graphene mesh is being used as a, this is stretchable. So when your uh, pressure increases, the resistance increases. So based on measuring the resistance, one can uh, identify the intraocular pressure. So this is also again uh, accurate, but a wire device. Then capacitance based uh, sensors came, <coughs> which will have two units. One is capacitive electrodes. Uh, that is inductive coil will be outside and you have the capacitor electrodes and the sensing layer will be inside. So based on the difference in the capacitance, the intraocular pressure were calculated. This is also again <coughs> wired device. So multifactor sensor, which was used uh, earlier for detecting glucose using graphene and the silver nanowire, the same setup was used to measure uh, the uh, intraocular pressure. But again, all of them are uh, non-invasive -in and they need wired readout. Sorry, non-invasive, but they require wired readout. But microfluidic sensors, they became uh, most viable non-invasive sensor capable of continuously monitoring because you have a sensing chamber and uh, you have the sensing channel. So suppose this is the device. So if your device, device will have a colored liquid. So when your pressure is high, the liquid will have a displacement in the channel. If the pressure is normal, then it will not have displacement. So based on the displacement of the sensing channel, the pressure can be measured. Same, similar to people using straw to drink cool drink. So if you suck the straw, what will happen? <coughs> the pressure in the straw is reduced and your liquid comes to your mouth. And if you blow, the opposite uh, takes place. The pressure increases, the liquid is pushed towards the, and the cool drink bottle or container. Similarly here, it is a little different. When the pressure is high, the liquid is being pushed and displacement takes place. So the, based on the displacement, the uh, pressure can be calculated. So here, if you see, this is a liquid reservoir where your uh, uh, sensing liquid will be there. If the, pressure is high, the channel will move, the liquid will move in the channel. And if the, if the pressure is less, it will move in the opposite side. So this is the liquid thing. And this is the air reservoir. If the pressure is high here, the liquid will be pushed to left. If it is less, it will be pushed to the right. So this is how the um, sensing unit on the contact lens will here. So these are some of my works. So I have utilized bismuth selenide layered structure, which can function similar to graphene. So I have used this to sense glucose. And this was already published. Now I'm using other nanoparticles like gold nanoparticles to do some remedy. And these are my the, the photonic crystals I have synthesized. And I have incorporated them in the polymer uh, matrix so this is can be stretched and bent <coughs> this is the continuation of my work so the photonic crystals i have synthesized i have incorporated them into the some a polymer matrix so i'm carrying out some uh, work for the sensing and this is will be my plan like i fabricate the lens and uh, fix the lens on the contact lens and based on the availability and concentration of the analyte, the color will be detected. And with the color change, uh, you can detect uh, the analyte. This can be taken for variable lens also. So I think we are close to uh, the deadline. So I will just touch upon drug delivery and uh, I'll conclude. So the usual eye drops given for uh, any treatment, so they don't have much residential time on the eye. 
they stay not more than 2 minutes they are washed away because of the movement of the eyelids and uh, because of the ocular surface due to the uh, precorneal elimination and uh, to cure any infection or a disease the eye drops should be there for a longer time therefore the contact lenses can be used to uh, function as a uh, drug carrier and drug delivery platform to uh, cure certain infections they can increase the contact time with the cornea and uh, it can have a sustained release and this can have appropriate control over timing and location of the cornea so there are different methods on it through molecular imprinting we can uh, design and there are two types either you load the nanoparticles with the drug and they include or you directly load the drug into the contact lens so if it depends upon the nature of the contact lens the polymer and one of the methods to treat a fungal treat uh, infection is uh, they have used cystocin uh, and they have incorporated silver nano wire with the graphene oxide <coughs> and this was used to deliver a drug for fungal infection and uh, this is the result after one day and after three days after five days and after seven days if you look at here the one with uh, the cystocin and the silver nanoparticle and graphene oxide were able to give better results this is the control so polarity based polymer vehicles depending upon the drug nature the uh, contact lens delivery platform can be designed in either in it can be either hydrophobic or hydrophilic so based on polarity you can design and the advantages of contact lenses for drug delivery so the requirement of uh, drug will dosage will be low and you can avoid frequent administration of the drug so because it is loaded onto the contact lens it will have a sustained release at a regular interval and prolonged uh, contact with the cornea that is it can have a longer residential time more than 30 minutes and the release can be sustained release the drainage loss will be less and it can have a good control over the time and the location of the cornea so the future prospects of this will be uh because it tear fluid is a rich uh, uh, bank of biomarkers it can provide it can be a fingerprint for diagnosing several uh, physical parameters like uh, glucose intraocular pressure chloride ion concentration urea concentration and several other things and smart contact lenses for uh, they are capable of both diagnosing and applying or supplying personalized medicine will be a beneficial one so in drug delivery they have to increase the ocular residential time and they bring a lower they can lower physiological barriers and side effects and they boost ocular bioavailability so the challenges that are lying are integrating the biosensor and drug delivery units and drug data communication so we need a sensing platform that can sense and take data and communicate to your system and the system can supply required a drug at a uh, required time and multiple diagnostics and supplying drug load based on diagnostic readouts the i mentioned about the uh, multi targeted microfluidic contact lenses so such units can be customized based upon the requirement of each individuals so depending upon the individual requirement we can fix the sensing unit and smart contact lenses with the integrated camera sensor and transmitters uh, they are to be brought into the market to <coughs> meet the requirements so this is all about the uh, 
uh, the presentation on the smart contact lenses for uh, ocular theranostics. So this is our uh, <coughs> Hello, sorry, Raj. Hello, Doctor uh, Raitin, other? Yeah, I'm here. You hear me? Yeah, I think he 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 has left. Please please oh. wait few minutes. Yeah. Oh, okay, okay. Sure. I think some internet internet uh, is yeah. used. Yeah. He was about to conclude. Yeah, yeah, it's about to conclude. Just to be wait uh, one or two minutes and then yes. we can come. Dr. Vaitinada? Yeah. Please, please conclude this event because uh, some internet okay. problem. Yes, sir. So, I think uh, he can uh, he cannot connect. Uh, yeah. Some issues. So, on Just to you summarize and conclude. Yeah, to summarize about this talk, the talk on the therapeutic, ocular therapeutic. Um, Dr. Dr. Denison Saviraj was explaining in detail about the ocular therapy i mean it's it's very interesting concept because uh, in the growing medical field and the technology new diseases coming up and increase in people getting infected and and the need for more diagnostic 
resources. Its concept of ocular therapeutic using the lens, eye lenses, the daily used eye lenses is more important and will play a vital role in coming days. And he introduced different types of ocular therapy, I mean, diagnostics using electrochemical techniques, photochemical, I mean, photochemical and even using microfluidic electrochemical devices and, and another one interesting he work about his experiments is using the bismuth selenide particles. That was more interesting because it's topological insulator, which is also playing an important role in replacing silicon these days. So in future, we can see in our own homes, this type of diagnostic devices and it will reduce the burden on the healthcare system in each country. And yeah, it's, I was thinking to ask some more questions, but unfortunately we didn't have them. Um, so I'd like to conclude and say thanks to our organizer. So I want to thank our organizer, organizing team, and especially Dr. Ganesh Raja for bringing such eminent person from international community, research community to enrich our people, research, encourage the researchers and the students who are in this meeting. And this will be also uploaded in YouTube so that you will get, I mean, many people will get benefited from his talks. And in future, we will also have a lot of this, this type of talks within different fields. And we thank the committee the UIT committee for organizing this event and we thank you all who is listening the listeners here and we encourage you again to participate in coming events in time one and all. Dr. Ganesh Raj.